Welcome to WTSA here in New Delhi, in India, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Shrikant Chandrasekharan, who is from IEEE here in India. Shri, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me here. Now, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, your your participation here at WTSA. I know that IEEE have got a, a stand here at the uh, WTSA Expo. Perhaps you could tell us a, a few of the uh, of the elements of the things that you, you're getting involved with at the moment. Absolutely. First of all, thank you for ITU for having me do this interview. So as you know, IEEE Standards Association is a sector member of the ITU. So as part of our sector membership, you saw our booth over there. But IEEE in India has been established for about 12 years now. So we've worked fairly closely with the government agencies here. So I head the business operations for IEEE in India. We have close to about uh, 75,000 members of IEEE in India, but I also have multiple roles within IEEE. Apart from running the business operations, I also work very closely with the Standards Association in developing standards. And one of my primary responsibilities is to encourage participation of our experts from India into global bodies, uh, be it IEEE, ITU, IEC, ISO, wherever they are. So we engage with the experts here to make sure that they are contributing to global standards development. So there are a few different things we are doing here. Uh, one of them, and if you visit our booth, you will see some elements of this. So one of them we are doing here is what we call as uh, uh, engaging in a training and capacity building program called the IEEE Blended Learning Program. That's a uniquely Indian initiative within IEEE, uh, but not just focused around India, but it's a global training and skillings program. So what we try to do is in emerging areas, whether it be cyber security or uh, IoT or uh, 5G, we are training students and we map the curriculum with the training program that we have so that students can get an experience on complementary skills and how we can make them industry ready. You know, there is a pretty wide gap in India between students and what the industry wants. And how many people have you put through this program so far? So we have close to 100,000 people who have gone through our platform within the IEEE Blended Learning Program. So it's both a certificate and a certification program. In fact, we co collaborated with a local body called Center for Development of Telematics. CDOT is an agency within the Department of Telecom, which is hosting the which is the Indian host to this uh, to this uh, conference. And we worked with them to launch a 5G certification program uh, that we are rolling out within India, right? So apart from that, within the standards world, one of the things that I'm looking at as a primary focus, I drive a practice called the foundational technology practice. As we all know, technology is evolving very fast, very rapidly. One of the key elements that I'm looking at within my practice is how do we build trust in technology, right? How do we address issues as identity, privacy, cyber security in the age of AI, metaverse, everything that's going around. And this conference is an exact complement for what we are trying to do with the IEEE. So uh, I, today morning I participated in the regulatory panel. So on, on how regulation and standards uh, work together what are the challenges that regulators face? Uh, I don't envy the regulators, okay? It's a, it's a challenging world, right? So from that perspective, uh, the lot of work that we are doing is very well aligned with the theme of this particular conference. Um, and so in terms of India, what are some of the challenges or uh, perhaps, oh, uh, and opportunities uh, that uh, are particular to uh, to this perfect this you know place. India is full of opportunities you know all challenges we convert them into potential opportunities and uh, that we look at it from different perspectives right one is how do we ensure connectivity across our masses right India is a very big place there are a lot of rural India which are not connected right so and uh, you have to understand there is a concept called average revenue per user, which is called ARPU. So deploying modern technology, the way it is established into rural can sometimes be pretty daunting for the user from rural communities to pay for it. So under that, to address that particular problem, we started back in the day, a program called Frugal 5G. How we can design an architecture that can be deployed in a way that can be implemented and used by the rural communities, right? So that program has given rise to standards. So this, is a, this we call as pre-standardization, just to understand the problem. And then as we understand the problem, we have evolved architectures that we can build it into standards. The standards can be deployed through products 
where it can be used by the community. There are a couple of interesting things that came out of it. One is, of course, the fact that there is rural connectivity, but we also collaborated with this uh, with Internet Society, who are also a sector member of the ITU. And uh, about eight years back, we started developing a joint training program called Building Wireless Community Networks, right? So it is wireless networks for the community, right? It addressed a couple of different things. One is we see that a lot of last mile is happening through Wi-Fi, which is IEEE 802.11, the standard from the IEEE. But when these things are being deployed, technicians who are actually deploying that in rural, they don't have the necessarily the background or the technical training. So we developed a training program which is not research level but a technician level training program along with the internet society and now we are taking it to what we call as village level entrepreneurs. So it is developing entrepreneurship through this program and the ISOC foundation recently granted us half a million dollars through which we deployed internet to 200 villages and 100 primary schools right and one of the criteria is disaster prone villages right where they have landslides floods right so where people have severe problems but nobody goes there to address it right so IEEE was the implementation agency for that uh, for that program we are a philanthropy organization too so we deployed the internet into the rural villages uh, we just completed the deployment it was a one year program just about a couple of months months back submitted it to, to internet society uh, very fulfilling program we collaborated with bsnl bsnl is a state operator the uh, cellular operator so they were our partner in bringing the connectivity to a lot of places that didn't have connectivity in fact there is a booth in hall 5 where IEEE is along with bsnl showcasing we have a smart class where students are actually joining live into the India Mobile Congress. Uh, very exciting times. Yeah, it's fantastic. And talking about uh, um, sort of exciting times, of course, AI is very much on, on people's minds, uh, artificial intelligence. In terms of standardization uh, for AI, what are the, the, the key challenges there, do you think? Oh, that's a, that's a very big, small, small question, very big answer, okay? Uh, so, for people who don't realize, we started looking at AI in 2014. In fact, when we started looking at AI, the view we took was IEEE's mission is advancing technology for humanity, right? That's our tagline. We thought that when technologies are coming and being deployed, we have to look at what is the impact of the technology on the society. So about, I would say now nine to 10 years back, we started looking at a program called ethically aligned design. In fact, there was a lot of resistance back in the day when we started the program saying why is IEEE getting into the ethical space. Fast forward it now, everybody is looking at ethics in AI, right? So we, we did a publication of a document called Ethically Aligned Design that gave rise to what we call as the IEEE 7000 series of standards. It is a consideration of system level design, what we call as value based engineering. So what are all the kind of values that need to be considered in the era of AI? How do we deal with, see technology is accelerating. One of the things we are trying to look at is as we build trust in technologies, how do we govern these technologies? So technology governance, data governance has become a very important challenge. So the IEEE 7000 series of standards look at privacy, employer employee data governance, children data governance. So we are one of the first standards bodies which came up with the standards for online framework for children. IEEE 2089, right? So we worked with the Five Rights Foundation in the UK. Uh, together we came up with this and we have a follow-on standards called online age verification. So these are challenges that does, doesn't touch upon technologies, but touches every human. We care about our next generation, right? How they are interacting with the internet, what are the safeguards that needs to happen, what kind of digital framework that needs to be established. So A and children, I think are a very big space for the IEEE. And not only we are developing the standards, but we are also developing certification programs under the banner of IEEE certified. How, do, how can we evaluate systems to comply to these principles, right? So we are doing it around privacy, algorithmic bias, transparency and accountability. We can send second round. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you again very soon, I hope. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.